changing hands uh, in, uh, well, the home of the Masters and uh, many others. And there you see a very dejected uh, Harley Race, former world heavyweight champion. But the man, I think Mr. Crockett has proved uh, once again, though, that Harley Race uh, is certainly an outstanding champion. Uh, there's certainly nothing that taken away from that man. Oh, that's right. He's a world-class wrestler, but I think Tommy Rich has proved that he's in the same class with Mr. Harley Race. And so that means, obviously, Tommy, that uh, your number one sights are set on Harley Race once again. Well, that's exactly right, Gordon. You know, and thing, I guess it makes me the proudest of all that I did come back to Georgia, and, I, and you know, and I did win the belt right here in Georgia, and the people, you know, just like I've said, they've been behind me 100%, and all I can say is I hope I do get another chance at Harley Race, and when it's over, I walk out on top. I feel very confident by the comments from uh, Mr. Jim Crockett, the president of the NWA, that that chance will uh, come in the very, very near future. Thanks so much. What a schedule you've been under. Thank you, and congratulations again. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. James Crockett, president of the NWA, and uh, Tommy Rich. Tommy Wildfire Rich. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast seen only here out of Indie Music TV in Ron Konkama, Long Island. At the board, as usual, is our super producer, Matt. How are you, Matty? Good as usual. How are you doing? It's good to see you. We missed you last Thursday. Yes, it was uh, quite a trip. All right, and to the right is the star of the show, Mr. Jimmy Farrow. Jimmy, how are you, man? Greetings and salutations. Back again. So, uh, coming off the Bill After Show, thoughts? Any feedback? So, we weren't on Thursday due to these special shows we're having today. Well, you know, I totally nerded out. I love Bill After and growing up uh, back in the mag days as we did. Does it really get any better than that? I mean, for us? No, I don't think yeah, it come does. Come on! Love Bill After. Great guest. Awesome sense of humor. I don't By think the way, it gets any funny, better funny man. introduced the guest today. But, uh, first no, not I'd, really. First, no. I'd like to thank the band who sings the Monty Nefaro theme oh. song. Jimmy Farrow's own band, along with his partner, Bart Griggs, yeah. they have compiled the band called Wisteria Hall. Wisteria Hall sings our theme song, Riding High. They also sing In My Dreams, This Life, Not Far Behind. Here Comes Rain, and you can find their music on Spotify, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. Yeah. Monty Nefaro could be seen on YouTube, the Monty Nefaro page, Facebook Live, the Monty Nefaro page, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, Twitch TV, the Monty Nefaro page, RTF Sports Network, which has now been changed to All Access Sports. Did I tell you that? No. All Access Sports Network. Okay. Every Thursday. I from... think I like that more. Do you like it? Yeah. I think I like this little access card with like you're actually going into the yeah. locker room. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? All right, well, their anchor show every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m., and then the replay is on Mondays from 10 to 11 a.m. Okay. You could also catch us on cable television, Channel 115, every Tuesday, the reduced version which you why do you always call it I, the reduced it's the abbreviated version there you go oh, yeah. it's the edited abbreviated it's not reduced you make it sound like it's got some sort of problem in bed so, that's terrible well, reduced go uh, on i might have that problem too from 8 30 to 9 p.m <laughs> and for the early risers on channel 115 at 6 a.m to 6 30 and also channel 20 Every Saturday morning for the late night party uh, is at 1.30 in the morning. Yeah, that's my kind of time. And you'll be able to catch our special guest on the reduced version. D you're doing abbreviated. Please go on. Our special guest <laughs> and former, and this is big, NWA heavyweight champion Tommy Rich. We will get back to Tommy Rich right after this commercial break. Wildfire. And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto excellence. Collision specialists. 631 261 6420. That's 631 261 6420. Auto Excellence. 
That's right, folks. Canine Corral for all your dog daycare and overnight care. Call 631-549-1544. That's 631-549-1544. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Monty Nefaro, seen every Thursday, produced out of Indie Music TV in Ron Cockham, New York. Ron Cockham, manamana. Hello. Boop, boop, anyway. boop, doop, doop, manamana. Go on. Well, this is, a, <laughs> this is a holy shit moment for us, right? Yeah. We've yeah. got fucking Tommy Rich in studio, <laughs> and I don't think I'd ever think I'd see this day, dude. It, this is our honor. Bro, you are you are our introduction to non WWE or back then WWF <laughs> product. Yes, the former yeah. NWA champion. Um, hey, well, I'm gonna say something too. You know, somebody say something about the Monty and the Pharaoh show, man. It's a uh, it's nationwide, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I've heard about it. I've seen it. I've seen it on the on everything. I, you know, I followed it on uh, Facebook, everything on the internet. And hey, look at here, Tommy Wildfire Rich is here, live, living color. Somebody Rich, say baby. something about Fire. <laughs> oh man, how you holding up through this uh, COVID era and this political unrest? in this country right now, Tom. Shoot, man, my wife, we had a little run in with it when it first started back in March, man. It, I'll tell you what, it's a real deal. Kind of like me being the real deal. No, but, uh, you know, it's tough, and, you know, it's... Uh, so you caught, you guys caught the COVID? Yes, sir, we uh, had So can, and, you, can uh, you tell the fans out there what it's like to have it? Or is well, it, it, lucky for us, you know, my wife, she has high blood pressure and a couple other things, and, you know, I'm at that age now where they say, you know, you're more vulnerable, but... uh we was down in Myrtle Beach, and, and it was staying, you know, because everything had shut down. And, you know, we weren't even really around nobody. We went to the ocean a few times, but everything else was shut down. And uh, about after a month being there, my wife said she didn't feel good. So we went home, and sure enough, we both tested. We had it. Had to go in quarantine for two weeks. And uh, just lucky we didn't need one have to go to the hospital. I mean, that was a blessing. Thank the Lord. And, uh, you know, anybody that's had it or lost someone, I'd just like to say uh, hearts with you, man, especially for those that's lost people, you know, family with it, because uh, it is hard. It, and, uh, like, I, you know, for about a month after, I, I was still getting headaches. Wow. You know, but now, you know, I'm all good now did you, anyway. Did you have a fever? Were you coughing? Like, what what was it like? I, see, that's the way my wife was like that. And me, me, I was uh, kind of sitting down on the throne for a lot, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and spitting up some. And, uh, you know, like, I lost, I lost my taste. And I just got my taste back, you know. They say that's one of the things you lose, and that's a, that's a real deal because I, I lost mine, but now I've got it back, and everything's good. Of course, we quarantined for two weeks and went back in, and they tested us, and everything was, you know, good. We was good to go. Give us that clean bill of health, thank God. But, you know, it's, it's hey, you know, like I said, just you got to keep fighting, man, and uh, – We'll come out on the other side of this when it's all said and done. I know it's tough on a lot of folks, a lot of businesses, and just all of those in need, man. Their hearts out with you, prayers with you. And uh, like I said, it's just a pleasure to be here, getting to travel again. You know, I've been locked up for so long, and <laughs> locked up ain't my style. So it's a pleasure to be here, be, be a uh, Long Island man, and just sit, sit with some friends, man, that enjoy wrestling and getting to shoot the breeze with y'all out there, man. It's a pleasure. Well, I got to tell you, it's our honor to have you here. You are an icon in this business, and we we use the word icon every so often. You are mm. an icon. Um, we lost Road Warrior Animal yeah. a couple of couple sure of weeks did, ago. Man. You I had share some any of the first matches with them guys. They come they come in from Minnesota, and, and uh, I can't remember who my partner was, but I think we had one of their first TV matches with them. And they just beat the dog stink out of us. Of course, that's all they had knew how to do. They were bouncers to begin with. And, uh, you know, I guess I only found them up there or something. I don't know what the whole deal was. But anyway, they was there at TV, and they was wrestling. And, and I tell you what, two two great guys. And it's a big loss for the wrestling world, their families, and, uh, you know, and all the wrestling fans out there because they were two class guys. You ever been hit that hard the first time you got in the ring with those two? Had you ever been hit that hard in the ring? Is it true how stiff oh, they were? Oh, they hit hard. I mean, but back when I started, I got hit hard by a lot of them. Okay. Uh, 
Abdullah Butcher, he can hit pretty hard, too. He's our old buddy, Abdullah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, you know, I mean, it just, uh, but they was probably, and they would just, they would just go 100 miles an hour. It wasn't no stopping with them. They was out there, and they would just go, and yeah, you did. You fought for your life, you know, but uh, two great guys, man, and, you know, at the end of the day, after you got to know, know them and everything, uh, two fine guys. Well, let me ask you, they worked stiff with you even though you they were green and you had this reputation? They were still stiff with you? Well, that's all they knew. They were stiff with everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but but as time went on, we learned to, rap, we learned to dance together. I okay. call it dancing. Right. And the more we danced together, the smoother it got. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's like one night uh, we wrestled Road Wars, me and Jerry Lawler. And... Uh, they wanted him to eat my lunch, and they wouldn't do it because we had built a bond, you know. Uh, and and I've just always respected them guys, and, and that, like I said again, it's a great loss to their family and the wrestling world, man. Did anybody did anybody ever object to their working so stiff in their early days? Did some of the veterans come up to them and go, "What are you doing?" Or did were they so physically imposing that they commanded respect right from the start, even though they were fresh into the business? Well, you got you got to remember, like. I mean, at, at the beginning, the Funks and all them guys, they fought hard anyway. Mm -hmm. When I come in, I got my ass whooped quite a few times, you know. I mean, it, it, you can call it Hollywood, but, but a lot of times it wasn't. I mean, you fought. You got in there and fought. It was wrestling. So, I mean, when I started, you know, I mean, it was it, like I went to wrestling school, and I learned that there, and I wrestled in high school. But when you got in, especially me, I was a, I was like a kid in there with grown men, you know, <laughs> and so it was easy for them to whoop my ass if they wanted to, and and then but I got in there and I had the heart and desire and the passion, and they all seen that. I mean, it's, it's uh, I get goosebumps still today because because I met I met some of the greatest people in the world that that if it wasn't for them, there wouldn't even be a Tommy Rich. They could have made me or break me just as quick, and and because. They took an interest in me, you know, give me an opportunity, and I went out there and busted my ass all the time, and, and they always seen that. So I mean, I mean, that's you, like Stan Hansen. I mean, it's, he was a clubber, too. <laughs> you know. I wrestled him. Well, he couldn't uh, see you. He didn't, have, you know. Yeah, awesome. well, <laughs> but, yeah. I think that was part of it. I think he just liked to hit you hard too. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the one of the. Parts of your meteoric rise back in the early 80s that blew our minds was when you do win the world title, and we could see that coming, we could see that this was clearly one of the best and top faces of the generation. Right then we knew that. But you only held it for four days, and I saw recently, and I know that this may be old news to some, but that's fine, Harley Race stated in a shoot interview regarding that title switch that it was a way to ensure a power struggle in the Georgia territory that ended with the famous promoter Jim Barnett, you know, coming out on top. And if I can quote Mike here, four days holding the title, what the fuck? You know, what is the story behind why you only held was... the title for four days? <sighs> To be honest with you, I don't know because I'm not into the politics of it. But I think a lot of it had to do, I mean, you look at what Flair did. I mean, going town after, you know, uh, night after night wrestling in Charlotte, then going to Tampa. Same thing Harley Race did. To me, Harley Race, the greatest world heavyweight champion there ever be, ever was to me. Because he gave me an opportunity. Every time I worked with Harley, I mean, he gave me a chance to go out there and show the people, like, what I could do because he Harley would wrestle Harley would wrestle to anybody's style, you know Rick Rick would wrestle Rick's style, and everybody had to wrestle Rick's style where Harley would adjust to every whose style it was, you know. And so I always appreciated that and and like I wrestled Rick Flair a lot. He, he was a great champion too. Uh, but the, I think the main thing is I was I was like 20 uh, and I was young. Smoking weed, drinking beer, and <laughs> jumping rope, whatever else was out there, you know. So I wasn't really what you would say depend would be dependable, and that was and that was a position that you had to be dependable in. Well, how does the conversation come about, Tommy? Does Barnett come up to you, or does Ole Anderson come up to you and say, "Hey, look, we're going to tag you with the NWA title, but you're going to lose it in a few days because race is in town"? And like, how does it how does it come about? I think Harley had most mostly it was Harley and Mr. Barnett is what I think the deal was. 
So did they come to you and say, hey, kid? They told me that night. Oh, so you didn't even know. No, I didn't night. know that night. Wow. And what you were you know. like? Were you shitting your pants? Like, oh, you yeah. Shit? I mean, Andre the Giant was there. He <laughs> held me up over his head. I mean, uh, God, I mean, I, you know, I was a 20-year-old kid, you know, and getting get one of the greatest things in professional wrestling. I mean, yeah, I was on top of the world. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, hey, you didn't hold it for four days. But I held it for four days, yeah, you know, great. so oh. uh, it is what it is. And uh, I wouldn't take nothing for it. And if I'd have been on top of my game a little better, I might have held it longer. I'm not saying it's my fault. I'm not saying it's nobody's fault. But at that time, I just know it was a lot of responsibility. And I probably wasn't the most responsible person. Well, so, But they tell you that night, hey, you're going to become NWA champion. You're like, oh, my God, this is incredible. You win the belt. Do they tell you they're going to take it from you in four days, or the the night the night of they tell you? Uh, is it? Not really. That didn't come up until a couple of days later. Okay. You know. So there was a possibility in your mind, you're like, "Holy cow, I'm going to have to travel to all these territories because I'm the new NWA champion." Or like... yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, and, and like I said, I mean, I was at home in Georgia. You know, I, I started in Tennessee. I just a uh, old country boy, and and got got an opportunity, man, and it was. You know, and at the time, it might have been bigger than I was, you know. So, uh, I mean, you know, like I said, a couple of days after, they let me know we was going to swap it back in Gainesville, Georgia. And, uh, you know, but I could live with it. It was going to Harley, going back to Harley. And, and to me, that's where it belonged anyway. Well, you know, we're fans, right? Our show just got popular. We're not like your agent, Eric Sims, ESS Promotion, who's here with you. <laughs> but, um <laughs> We don't consider ourselves part of the industry, but I will tell you, again, being Northeasterners, seeing you, 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 your name all of a sudden became instant success with us, right? You were Tommy Rich, the NWA champion, and when yep. we finally started getting Georgia Championship Wrestling, you were the guy, right? We were always yeah. looking to see Tommy Rich. Listen, Jimmy Farrow, he's a star of our show. He's going to do something called The I Juice am. for all the fans out there. Just the, give go over some juice. career highlights Here with you. Go. And then okay. we're going to probably take a commercial break, and then we're going to hit you with some questions, what okay, you like. Okay. Let's have some fun. If you don't want to answer them, of course, you say, I'll pass. All right, off to the juice, ladies and gentlemen. It feels so anticlimactic, though. You know, I mean, uh, I'm not even thirsty right now. And where's my glass? It's not here, bro. <laughs> oh, for God's sakes. Ladies and gentlemen, our esteemed guest this fine week, uh, Thomas Richardson. And if I get anything wrong, we can yell at Wikipedia. <laughs> Born July 26, 1956. Of course, we know him as a very famous, infamous wrestling legend. Tommy Wildfire, Rich being the nickname. He is the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion back when belts meant much more than they do today. Uh, I checked with our esteemed guest before the show, and uh, at least four times the Georgia Heavyweight Champion, uh, possibly more. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather yeah. most everybody come through for the title. So. Uh, possibly more. Uh, of course, when I met my partner way back in the day, uh, the center of the universe was not the internet. The center of the universe, folks at home, was the After Mags. Uh, coming off our most recent guest, Bill After, with Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and of course, its sister publications, The Wrestler and Inside Wrestling. When I met my partner back in junior high over 40 years ago, Tommy Wildfire Rich was the center of our universe as far as our access to anything that was not WWF because mm -hmm. back in the days when you had to get up and change your channel physically, all we basically had was WWF, and if you switched over to UHF, you might get something called Lucha Libre de Profesional that was from California, and that was the Olympic Auditorium, and that's where I saw the great John Tolos back in the beginning. So at the center of the universe, pre-internet was these magazines, and this is where... Mr. Wildfire, Tommy Rich, was the most popular PWI Pro Wrestler of the Year in 1981, the most improved wrestler of the year before that, so you could see it coming in 1979, and the Rookie of the Year before that in 1978. Ladies and gentlemen, and we'll be right back after this with one of our favorite all-time greats, the former World Heavyweight Champion of this world, Tommy Wildfire Rich. Be right back. Jimmy, I gotta take a dump. What? No, I mean, I need a dumpster. <sighs> well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York, 631 900 Dump. Hmm. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by. Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, 
New York attitude. Good fucking wine. Yeah. In the mood for a freshly roasted cup of coffee? www.offtherailscoffeeroasters.com All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, seen every Thursday, produced out of Indie Music TV in Ronkonkoma, New York. With the very famous, iconic Mr. Tommy Wilde, Fire Rich. Tommy, have you ever been to Ron Conkama, New York? <laughs> I don't even know if I can say that. That's what I had. Uh, Ron Conkamanka. Ron Conkamanka. <laughs> Inga Binga Bunga Bong. Uh, Let Bunga me ask you when, you, when you, when you, obviously you've been in New York, right? Yes. Numerous times. But uh, have you ever wrestled on Long Island at all? You ever remember coming out here to wrestle? I, I don't think so. No Comac Arena for no, you. Uh, Queens, no. when I was wrestling with ECW, I can't, like we do Queens. Uh, and, yeah. and uh, That's Long Island technically. Is Te- that Long Island? Te- technically. technically yeah. well, I knew we'd come us. through it. I knew yeah. we'd come through it coming here. Yeah. Well, then I have wrestled in. Yeah. Yeah. Say it. Long Island. Say it, on Bobby. Yeah, no. Say it, Bobby. Oh, God, now he's on you. No, this is terrible. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on. Do, 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 do. Come on. <laughs> Tommy, I got to ask you, one of my, and and he seems to be lost a little bit in the sands of time, and it kind of bothers me because I feel like this man was one of the greatest, intense, what's he going to do next kind of villains ever. Can you talk about Buzz Sawyer? He was intense, all right. Yeah, I know, I know, but we'll get, we'll get into is, his is personality. Intense, is, is intense... Uh, but man, on screen. Was, is intense a different word for high as fuck all the time? Is that like a different, like... I, I had so a bad. Bad. Made, that's what made him dangerous. Yeah. Like the road warriors, <laughs> you know, you just know you're going to fight for your life, but you never knew what you was going to get with Buzz. He kind of like that box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, but you guys, you guys danced for like two years, didn't you? I, I was, was the only one that would wrestle him. <laughs> so, wait, <laughs> so let me ask you, right? God. Professional <laughs> wrestling, very physical sport. <laughs> Got to take care of each other. Okay. Ready to go to the ring. Buzz is knocking down an eight ball, and you're like, hey, I'm okay with this. We're going to have a good time. And you're like, what am well, I doing? With your right good now? money. With your good money. That's all, wow. you know, back then, that's all that mattered, you know. I mean, oh. you drew good money. But I told that Buzz, too. I mean, I told him, I said, you hurt me. And I said, I'm not going to work with you. Okay. You know, I mean, he knew. He, I'd see him take advantage of some of them kids. And I told him, I said, I can't work like that. I'm not going to work like that. And he never did. Now, he'd see Harley do a suplex on the floor, and I'd always be his guinea pig for that. And he hurt me a couple of times like that, but never, I don't think intensely, I mean, did he hurt, you know, did he hurt me? Just accidentally, a couple of times. <laughs> so, was Buzz a bad guy, though? Like, I, we've heard stories, and was he just mean and bad with bad intentions? I don't think Buzz had that many bad... Buzz just Buzz was just Buzz, and uh, if he if Buzz liked you, then you was good, and if he didn't like you, then he was gonna do what he could. Like if you and me didn't like each other, we probably wouldn't say nothing to each other. But but Buzz might go out his way to make your day miserable if he didn't like you. Okay. You know, that's I you know that's uh, I mean he was because he was always good to me, and if I seen he was in too bad a shape, I just went on about my business anyway. So, so I didn't have him, which I didn't travel with Buzz none. So, I mean, I can't really tell you. I mean, on the road, how he was. I mean, you know, he went his way and we went our way. Well, who was your road friend back in those days? Uh, of course, Nick Patrick. Uh, let's see, my cousin Johnny, Brad Armstrong. Rode a lot with Bob Armstrong when I first started. Uh, of course, Rick Martell, we traveled a lot together when he was in Georgia. Okay. And then Tito Santana, when he was Richard Blood, uh, he come to Georgia, and we traveled a lot together because we teamed up together. And then I traveled a lot, and mostly with Tony Atlas, because we had such a good long run as the tag team champions. Right. So let me ask you this: Tony, when he was in studio, told a story. Um, I guess he drove off the road. I think you, like, 
hit him from behind or something. He drove off the road in the car flip. <laughs> what did he And the do? Iron Sheik had to pull him out of the car. Oh, it's, my it's, God. Like, you did something to him that made him drive. Oh, I, wrecked, I wrecked the car. Okay. <laughs> I wrecked the car. He was in the car with me. Okay, so what's the story? Okay. Anyway, that was, a, that was another time when <laughs> a little too much party and we left the building. Anyway, I run off the road and the car flipped. Ooh. And, uh, Ooh. and, uh, Anyway, we had to take it, and it was, let's see, it was me, Tony, Nick Patrick, my cousin, Johnny, and uh, Tony hurt his neck. We had to, they had to take him to the hospital, and, uh, but anyway, yeah, that was on me. That was my bad. Is it true that the Iron Sheet came down there, though, and, like, ripped the door off to get him out of the car? Or is that kind of fabricated? <laughs> well, I know him and Ole Anderson stopped and helped. Ah, okay. So, so he, okay. he probably did because the car was upside okay. down, so he had to yank it. So now, what are you guys upside down in the car and like? Is yeah. Like Tommy, what? What are you doing, pal? <laughs> you put the having a conversation. Uh, <laughs> they were upside down. You shouldn't have had that seventh yeah. beer. What the? We weren't really talking. <laughs> it's kind of like a moment of silence. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm thinking, what Shit. am I? I'm thinking, what am I going to do now? You know. So, uh, so what, yeah, does Arne, anyway. what does Arn say to you? Uh, not Arn. What does Oli say? Oh, it's Oli. Oi. Oh, Oli. Oli started taking because they thought I was drunk. They say, because the cop gave me a DUI. Anyway, uh, long story short, Ole was taking money out of my check every week to pay for the car. Right. And uh, anyway, I went to court. Of course, I wasn't drinking. I just was wore out tired. And uh, so anyway, they dropped the case, so he had to give me my money back. He didn't like that too much. Me and Ole had that kind of, you know, he loved to use me because I made money. But he didn't like me very much. How, how about Oli's rep in general? Oli's not very li well liked by most folks. See, he, and that's that's why he liked Buzz so good, because Buzz was <laughs> not liked so much. Wow, so you that, know? that, that so they got that along bond? good. That's yeah, they got along good. Oli treated him about like his son. So why didn't he like you? Because he had to pay you back for the. Uh... Uh, no, nah, just because he just thought I shouldn't be wrestling. You. Because I was so little when I went to Georgia, you know, I was like 210, 220, and everybody else was great big guys, you know. And uh, he just thought, you know, I don't, I don't you... know what he thought. He just didn't think too much of me. So th but then when he saw I could draw money, then it was all good. Oh, I'm sure. You know, so. I'm sure. So I got to ask one more thing about Buzz Sawyer, because I really did enjoy his on-screen performances. If he wasn't who he was behind the scenes with the drugs, his promos were so intense. Would he have been the same character if he didn't well, have that I've lifestyle him, off camera? Him, I've seen him do promos straight, too. I mean, okay. so, I mean, I don't know that it was all the drugs. I mean, he was just a different type of individual, you know. He was, he was kind of crazy and out there a little bit, you know. You know, um, you worked with one of my favorite tag teams of all time, the Freebirds. Mm. Yes, sir. Can you... Can you uh, Talk about the Free Birds, maybe especially Michael Hayes. How was your relationship with Michael Hayes? Well, if it wasn't for Big Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts, Michael Hayes wouldn't have never even been a Free Bird. All he could do was talk. I'm sorry if he's one of your heroes. Um, but not, I'm, not, not a, I'm not a fan. Not, not, his not, not, not a hero. He told the story, didn't not, he? Not a hero, but I did enjoy their work, right? Yes. Mike, oh, yeah. Michael they definitely worry, had Big Terry skill. Gordy. Big Terry Gordy, if he hadn't went before his time, I mean, he was one of the great. I mean, he could work as good as anybody in his business, so, and had the psychology too. You know, he. But Big Terry started when he was sixteen. I mean, shoot, he looked like a man when he was sixteen. So, did you not get along with, with Michael though? Like, well, I got along with him. He just, he just, he just talks about stuff he don't know nothing about. Sometimes, you know. I mean, don't say nothing about something if you don't know what you're talking about. And he said a few things about me that he didn't know what he's talking about. Can you? Can you? Elaborate a little bit. Oh like no, was... just like the thing with Harley. He said it was a. He said that uh, the referee that wasn't supposed to count Harley out. You know, just different stuff. Just he maybe did... a little jealousy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. I think. Well, think about it, right? You, he didn't you, win the you world forever title. the NWA. You're an yeah. NWA champion, He's like you not... said. Four days, one day, <laughs> twenty hours doesn't matter, right? right? That's a prestigious title. Absolutely. That you know, Michael never never got his hands on, right? And 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 Michael, I mean. And it's like I said, I mean, he he was a mouthpiece, and he could run that mouth good because he could piss anybody off, that's for sure. 
Not even if he's trying to. Did he get carried away with the rocks? Did he think he was a rock star behind the scenes? Was he obnoxious like the Axl Rose? Oh, type? yeah. Like, he was. Oh, yeah. There you go. And he, he, lo- he loved that. Uh, you know, I like you know I like to play with a little bit of, you know, I did a little bit of everything. But uh, they was they was them Tennessee boys. They like that old J.D. Yeah, yeah. And that J.D., he drink a thing. He's 10 foot tall, bulletproof sometimes. Right. You know. And, uh, Running around so, half naked like David Lee Roth. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Same, <laughs> same. <laughs> I could see that. But you both were Atlanta guys, right? So you guys. Well, they was, you know, I was, I wrestled. I, I was in Georgia, and then like I'd go home to Tennessee, and uh, they'd come in. Like I was there a couple of times with them. I wasn't ever around them a whole lot. You know, when they was in Tennessee, they was in Tennessee for a little while when I was there. And then in Georgia, a couple of times they were coming in. Now they would be down there for Watts working, you know, Louisiana, and then they'd come back to Georgia for a while. You know, so everybody kind of traveled. I was just, I was lucky. I just had to go, you know, I got to go back home to Tennessee. And then when it got time to go, you know, then I'd come back to Georgia. So, it, excuse me, it really worked out. I mean, real well for me because I, I – I just don't know. I like the guys in Charlotte, man. They they did and and, and in Louisiana so much, the, so many miles. I mean, they wrestled and had to drive 300 miles to the next town. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in Atlanta, Georgia. Shoot, Monday night we did Augusta, Georgia. That's the reason I never wanted to leave there. That's about 140 miles. Tuesday was Macon, that was 60 miles. Then Wednesday you did Columbus, Georgia, was 110 miles. Then on Thursday they'd run Athens or. Rome, Georgia, because they wouldn't carry. So, so I kind of, I kind of get the feeling like you were like, you know what? I was, you were okay with losing that title because you didn't want to be traveling around. You were okay just doing that Georgia circuit. Yes, sir. I, I love, I, I love Georgia. I mean, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. It was good to go home to Tennessee, but and and I worked some of the other territories. Like I worked, uh, you know, in Kansas City. Uh, you know, Mr. Barnett. He like when, they, like I worked with some of these promoters, and I'd be like pretty close to the top and uh i know what some of the others was making i know what i got paid and so i can make as much money being home in georgia as i was being on the now, road now you're talking my language bro you're rolling right into it what does tommy rich make a match what does tommy rich make a year back in 1983 84 shooting in georgia i was making you know you'd make 15 to 25 a week you know, nice. and then nice. when winter hits, you might go down to a thousand. But I mean, that's still good money because you're home every night. You're not buying hotels. You're not yeah. buying gas. You're not yeah. going out uh, having to get hotels. What was an average match for Tommy Rich? Like average time of a match? You weren't doing one hour of Broadways, right? You were. Well, I did. I mean, when I wrestled, you know, and I wrestled Flair quite a bit, and he always, he always, because he knew I like party a lot. He said, so he'd always, they'd tell us to go 30, and he'd take me 45 or 50, that's, you know. That's a matter of time. But, but I didn't care because I could go. I yeah, didn't, sure. It didn't bother me. And then Harley, Harley would always wrestle me because it was just so smooth. And I enjoyed it, and I never got tired wrestling them because they, they knew what they were doing. I, you know, it's kind of like dance. You got one that leads and one that follows. So, and I was I was blessed. I, I got the opportunity to follow, you know, Black Blackjack Lanza, you mm-hmm. know, with Bobby Heenan, man, uh, Baron Von Rasky. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, they have characters today. But these guys was uh, Ox Baker, looked like a Neanderthal. Mm-hmm. They were just, they didn't have to get no that that was them that was their persona man that was their personality I mean Baron von Rasky he looked like a, a you know a German sure. you know and and black 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 Jack Lanza uh, Mulligan I mean they looked like big old cowboys I mean that's you know and, and that's uh, that's the way it was everybody I mean Stan Hansen he was a big old cowboy and you Tommy know Rich was Tommy Rich that was you yeah that was that me was... little and that's and that's I think that's what the reason I got over so good because they'd seen all these big guys mm-hmm. and they and they love me, but they like to see me get my ass kicked a little bit and then fight back. Sure. And that's what I did. I, I never run out of gas, you know. So, so it was, you know, it was a good combo for me. And 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 like I wrestled Kim Patera, another great one, you know that one, the, you know, in the Olympics and everything else, and and that took and, and showed me things. So I was, you know, I was very blessed to get in the business and and get the opportunity to wrestle the guys that I did, and I respect every one of them. So let me ask you, let's go back a little bit. You mentioned Andre, you mentioned Ric Flair. Did you go out partying with these guys? Yeah, me, me and Rick Martell every time, you know, Rick, Rick French Canadian. And uh, 
I remember one day I was wrestling at the Omni, and because every time Andre come in, we'd have to take him out. I mean, we didn't have to, but we did, because you love Andre. And and uh, so one night, it was a Sunday, and we did the Omni. And you always had to dress nice, you know, for the Omni. So I went that day and bought me a powder blue, like a, didn't have a vest, but like a little suit thing. Uh, and so we go to the Omni, we wrestle, and there's this place called Kelly's, a little Irish bar. Well, they close at 12 on Sunday because everything closed up on Sunday at 12. So we get there and we drink and carry on. All of a sudden they say last call and Andre say, hey boss, let's go to this after hours bar. And me and Rick looked at each other. I didn't even know there was no after hours bar, you know, on Sunday in Atlanta. Sure enough, here we go. We go over there and we start drinking. I said, heck with it. I said, give me a vodka and grapefruit juice. And I took that and I just killed it. I told Andre, I said, look, I wasn't even nothing in there. He told that guy, he said, he had him pour another one. And they put about that much grapefruit in it. And I had to drink it. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, a little later on in the night, I'm feeling really bad. So I hit that bathroom. And it don't have but one stall and then one of them little pee things, you know. So somebody's in there, and I can't get in. So I just go over to the little urinal thing, and I'm throwing up, man. Uh, uh. All of a sudden, I hear somebody in that other one throwing up. Uh, uh. All of a sudden, they open my door, and it's Rick Martell. <laughs> Andre, they got us both sick. As you come in the door, there was like a bench here and a bench here, a little L shape. <laughs> I was laying on one. Oh no! So we cut, we got over that and come back out at the bar. They got about three o'clock, and and at three they start cooking breakfast. So Andre says, "You want something to eat?" And they started cooking that bacon there. I had to run to the bathroom <laughs> again. Son, me and Rick both. I come out. I came out. Rick didn't get sick, but he went outside. He couldn't smell it. Either. He was laid on one bench. I was laid on the other. And Andre comes out, he picks Rick up in one arm, picks me up in the other one. And Rick had a, a 72 or 3 Thunderbird back then and uh, carried us the car. And I didn't even know Andre could drive. He put, I got in the back seat. Rick was in the front seat on the passenger side. And Andre drove us back in my little, my little suit thing the, on the, in the back seat. The window didn't know about that far, little smoking window. And uh, I got to having him heave. I spit up all over my dead girl jacket and everything. <laughs> Next day, I was going to take it to clean. I said, hell, I just throw it, throw it in. It says $100 down the drain. Oh you God. know, I just threw it away, yeah. But, yeah, Andre, man, he was great. All the, I, had a, I had a van, and any time he'd come in, in the back, it had uh, a table, and you take it down, there's a little horseshoe there. So we put cushions in it, and Andre would sit down in there and throw his arms up there, and we'd take off and go wherever we needed to go, you know. Yeah, Andre was very good people. Wow. How about Ole Anderson one more time, if we can bring him up? He claims to have had a huge, this is his word supposedly, huge part in making your career. Is that true or false? Is that fair for him to say that? Well, it's fair because he was the booker. I mean, you there know. You go. So, like okay. I said, he didn't like me at first. But That's one for Oli. One for Oli. You know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, and me, he did. And, and me and him, I'd say, I mean, me and him didn't go to dinner together no time. Mm -hmm. You know, but as far as business, we was, I was always business. He was always business with me. But, I mean, we didn't have dinner with each other. You know. He saw you were worth dollars, though. Yeah. He oh, yeah. That. Yeah. And that's, and that's, uh, you know, and, it, and at first he wanted to let me go, and uh, Mr. Barnett, he says, I want to keep the kid, and, and say so anyway, and then, uh, like the first night I came to, to, to Atlanta from Tennessee, you know, I was, I was just 18, and uh, or 19, and I had to wrestle Abdul with the butcher, and oh. Jerry Jerry told me, he said, if you get there, and things ain't going right, he said, call me, and I'll get you back here. I went out there, wrestled Abdul. He beat me in 30 seconds, busted my head. Tony Atlas saved me. I thought, oh, God, I need to call him right now. <laughs> I should have called him before I went out here. But anyway, uh, I never called him and, and stuck it out. And then and me and Tony clicked. And it just, you know, it was just Georgia was ready for some Tommy Rich, you know. We got a fan out there, Modern Day Warrior, he asks. Uh, Tony Atlas and Paul Orndorff had a fight 
and he wants to know if Tony lost his ear and if Tommy cried, that's why B. Brian Blair said happened. I don't know. What on Is there earth? a Tony Paul Orndorff <laughs> fight that There's a Tony Paul Orndorff fight, but you'll have to get them to tell you that story. Okay. But I didn't cry and Tony didn't get his ear bit off. <laughs> yeah, I tell you that much. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. What, where did that come from? Hey man. I mean I I didn't want to see him fight, you know, but they got out there and tussled a little bit, but Two was he grown, wearing his uh, toast, two grown his men on handles? the testosterone was zooming. Oh my god! You God's. know, so a lot of juice going on back then. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll be back right after this commercial break. Jeff Quest Graphics Design, custom vinyl lettering, and all your art and video needs. Five one six three one seven eight two zero four. That's for Jeff Quest Graphic Design. Jimmy, I just got the best hookup on tickets. Hmm, fill me in. I went to www.seatslinks.com and ordered the best tickets with the best prices. Call 718-676-0504. Seatslink, the complete ticket experience. Tell them Charles sent you. And Varola Worldwide Logistics for all your logistic needs. Please call 862-227-3670. Once again, that's 862-227-3670. Varola Worldwide Logistics. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Monty and Faro seen every Thursday produced out of Indie Music TV in Ron Conkham in New York. And we are with our special guest, the iconic former NWA heavyweight champion, Tommy Rich. So, Tommy, the Farrell's the star of the show. He's the master wrestling, pro wrestling expert. I'm just the fat guy that sits to his what? left. <laughs> but the thing, that's, the thing that's important to me, that's though, is horrible. the most important thing hey. is the ring rats, man. Uh, like, how did what, I was, what was life, Tommy Rich, single guy with the ring rats, Town to town in Georgia. You were a bit of a rock star yourself there, big guy. Yeah, Go on. What was it like? Let, let's have it. Easy with that big guy. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I'm about big as Bonnie. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. No, seriously, though. You oh, man. Were, you're you're good a, uh, looking at the, at the top in Georgia champion. The girls used to scream for you, so let's have it. How was it? Well, I had just as many grannies with canes beating Ole Anderson up when I wrestled him too. I mean, uh, you didn't you didn't take the grannies home though. Let's let's talk about the younger ones. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you're at a bar, man. Like, what's it like? Are people, girls, just coming up to you? Oh you yeah, know? I mean, yeah, it was. Yeah. Was it mind blowing? I mean, you you yeah, said you was... had to go from one level of popularity to so, to oh well, my give god! You, I'll give you I'll give you a quick story. Well, let me get let you me like this. I want to hear the story, but here's my scenario, right? So uh -oh. there's Michael P.S. Hayes, right? Well, he's in this. He thinks he's, he's a stud. He's in this. And there's the hot Tommy Rich. Have at it. Let's hear it, brother. I'm we're in Wheeling, West Virginia. All right. When uh, right next to the building is a Holiday Inn, we stay there every time we come to town. Perfect. So. You know, Holiday Inn, they bar, they bars, they never really hop in. No way. It's just for folks that stay there. Anyway, I told them people that night, I said, if I fill this bar up tonight, do the boys get to drink for free? And they said, yeah, like laughing at me. And uh, <laughs> so when I went out to the ring, I was wrestling Buzz that night. I grabbed that microphone. I got in a little trouble over that too, but... <laughs> Anyway, because Ola didn't tell me to say it, I said, I said, Buzz saw you. I'm about to I kick your ass tonight. We going next door to the bar at the Holiday Inn. Then people at Holiday Inn was so mad, they had to call extra security. There were people. The, the bar was so full you couldn't serve nobody. The outside was just as full. And when we got out of the car, we had to take off running because the people was coming at us. I mean, you talk about like rock stars, and that—that's the only time I really. And I was kind of like scared. I've been in a, you know, been a bad guy, and had the people pissed off, ready to jump on me, but just in people chasing, and we run down this hallway. Michael was, Michael was somewhere, and he took off running too, and we followed him. He run down the dog on dead end. We was all standing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was. I mean, it was. It's a different world. I mean, it's uh, 
That was a lot of our business. Was, well, Flair you know, used to the, do that crap to you guys all the time, right? When he used to be in Georgia Championship Wrestling, he'd be like, I'm staying at this hotel tonight, and he'd make sure the girls were coming too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. He dropped that on the air. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you would do that just to, pl you know, plug stuff sure. sometimes, you know. Sure. And it was good. It just, the people at the Holiday Inn didn't expect the turnout that they got, you know. So that wasn't really a good situation. I got told not to do that no more. <laughs> what? Listen, as long as you're out of the zip code, it doesn't count. <laughs> so that's what I thought. That's, that's, that's right. Yeah. You, got, you got my backing on that. You won't <laughs> okay. get in trouble. Just right. as long as you're out of the zip code, you're good to go. Apply that all over Long Island. Absolutely. You can go from town to town. Oh, that would not be, That sounds dangerous. Tommy, i got to ask you, how is it that a former NWA champion and the biggest face of Georgia Championship Wrestling never eventually wound up in the WWF? No Vince. What's the story? That's a good question. What's the story? Uh, growing up with Vince, uh, I always wondered. Roddy Piper had me booked once or twice. Roddy Piper, another great one we lost too, by the way. Love you, brother, man. Mm. Uh, but Roddy had me booked there once or twice, and, and uh, Ann Gunkel had opened up a territory in Georgia. And, you know, I'm a cornbread boy, you know. <laughs> You know, New York just wasn't so, for you. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't you're really saying, my or? cup of tea. And, and uh, oh. she gave me an opportunity and put me on a guarantee that was really good. And we wasn't working but about once a week, if that. And that lasted for a year. So then by the time that was over, you know, I was doing something else. And then I went to ECW. And uh, so it, it just, the cards never really did, failed. But did you ever get the call? Like, I know Roddy tried to book No, me, Roddy, I, just, that was as far as it ever went. You know, Roddy tried to get me to come, and, and it just, I never, they never called me, and I never called them. That's so about, you looking, know. Looking back, do you strange. wish that you would have went to the WWE? Oh, let me ask you this. You're an old-timer you're an old -timer NWA guy, right? So, growing up, the NWA was always the, the main mm -hmm. focus of wrestling fans. In the mag days, In the it mags, was right? considered yeah. the biggest. We were WWE guys, again, think right. about like Yankees, Red Sox, like we, sure. we were anti-NWA, fair enough to say, right? Yeah, well, it was company, it was territories right. back in those days, so of course we sided more with Vince, we grew up watching and going to the Garden. But Go now on. that the WWE is one of the only games in town, we know AEW is coming around, but eh. was New York, in the mind of a wrestler, the, mecca. the place, the mecca, you had to be there, because... Oh, it was for, I mean... And I, I guess I'd be crazy to say no, but it's it's like I had a bunch of opportunities to go to Japan, and I just didn't – the money was great, you know, but I just – I didn't like being – I didn't like being gone, you know, so I didn't go near as much as, as a lot of guys did. You know, I went a couple of times for Baba, uh, and and I just and – the, and the first time I went, I went for six weeks, and there wasn't nobody on the trip that I knew. Oy. And so I was begging to go yeah, on then. Yeah. And then. But when it went to the, like, three- or four-week tours, it wasn't so bad. But I just – I had just different things going on, you know, and it just – just wasn't my it just wasn't my cup of tea. Let's say. Yeah, you're a family guy. Uh, I can tell, right? Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, uh, I'll tell you so what. You I mean, do I kick myself in the ass for it? Something? Yes, I do. Yes, I do, because I know I should have went. Right. But at the same time, hell, I could have got over there and died because I was miserable. You know. Sure. So, so I just, uh, you know, you say, would you change anything? And, and so we well, can't change the stuff no way. But I, I really don't. It might be a couple of things I might do different. Again, but. WWE guys, Madison Square Garden, we're from New York, right? Sure. Madison Square Garden, the Mecca. Was the Omni the Mecca for NWA guys, or was it Texas? Like, what was what was considered the Mecca to, to wrestle? Well, I, I'd, say, I'd say Georgia TV was the Mecca, because guys like Dusty, they all wanted to be on that TV, because they all like to travel around. And, and if you was on that TV, sounds like talking to Terry Funk one day, him and Dory, to, like, Terry makes pretty good friends, and he told me he come in to do TV one time. And he said, he said, man, he said you need to come out and work for us. He said they were going to some town and pulled in a store, and the girls knew who they were, and they wanted to know did they have Tommy Rich in the car with them. Right. You know, so so some missed opportunities there that I think, but but I at the end of the day I still travel. I just didn't have to go and work in territories. You know, so that was that was good for me. You know. And uh, like I said, there was a couple of promoters that didn't want to pay me, and so I didn't go no way. So, you know, it, it's, uh, it is what it is. I mean, I, I don't have no regrets.
On the subject of promoters, you obviously worked with uh, the great Jerry Lawler, Paul Heyman. ECW is my absolute favorite. And, of course, uh, Mr. Barnett. Can you compare those guys to me a little bit about, you know, what it was like to work with each of them and their differences in approach to the business, perhaps? Well, Mr. Barnett, he just, it was, uh, I mean, you figure, you figure when Mr. Barnett started 17, Ted Turner was cable before cable was cool. Mm -hmm. He had nothing on that cable station. So he only thing he had was Braves baseball and Georgia Championship wrestling. Yep. And the Braves, bless their heart, that's when they were just gosh off. They were not so good. You know, so <laughs> so 17, I'd say it was an image to Mr. Barnett. He liked the politics of it. I mean, the glitter, the glamour. And he took he took and made he took that Georgia championship and made it a product that you could sell all over the country. He could have done he could have done what Vince done way before he did it. He could have went to all these towns because he had a t TV that went everywhere. But because it was NWA and territories, he didn't want to step on no one's feet. Feet. So, so you know, I, I look at that because, like, toward the end when Mr. Barnett was out of it, Ole was running like we'd run Ohio, but she could shut down. You know, Mr. Barnett asked me one time. He said, "Would I go up and work for uh, Mr. Farhat, Eddie Farhat, because they were friends?" And he, he he was losing, and he Mr. Mr. Barnett wanted to help him. So anyway, I, I went up and did a show at a National Guard Armory, and they had as many people outside as they did inside. So, and, and like Kansas City, Bob Geigel, I went up and worked for him some when they were, you know, because I didn't mind doing that because if, if there was money there, they would always pay me. But when there was money there and I didn't get paid, I took offense to it. You know, I didn't ever say nothing about it. I just remembered who did it. Speaking of not getting paid, how was it like working with Paul Heyman? Did you ever have to experience uh, that? That was that was the greatest. That was the greatest job. He in paid the world. you. I yeah, Well, Paul, I mean, wow, he managed he managed me and Austin Idol. You know, managed us. Right. So I mean, I knew him, and then I think Tommy Dreamer may have had something to do with us with me coming in too. Okay. But. Uh, Anyway, yeah, that was the greatest job in the world. I ain't never managed. I wish I was still doing that but yet. I, but I find it strange, right? You never wanted to leave the South, but now you're coming out northeast to wrestle for, <laughs> He's not, you know, an up-and-coming Well, company. it was just for the weekends, though. Okay. okay. They had the best deal in the world. You come out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, go home Monday. There you go. Right. Okay. And you I was feel? making good money for three days a week. You know, you they paid about? me good. And, and so, yeah, I, I loved working at ECW. And, and all the guys... I mean, they might have been a wild bunch, but they was all pretty cool, you know. How would you feel about being a full-blooded Italian when they approached you with that? <laughs> what that you was talking the... about, baby? I'm so the big dog. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, you want to go get a slice after this is over? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my Tommy, God. You were, for the longest time, probably the hottest baby face in the NWA. Oh, for yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. When did it start to slip away? A I guess when Crockett, when Crockett took – when it – Became WCW, and that's when the tor territories were going under too. I mean, you know, just it just wasn't uh, it wasn't nothing there. You know, I went home. I went home. And, uh, I guess US USWA, you know, was the last the last on the block really. Yeah. Because we I went there and worked. You know, we still worked our regular, you know, five six days a week. You know, and then when that ended, uh, I don't remember what year I went to ECW, but I came. Back to Georgia and was just working independence and uh, then and they called and, and I got the opportunity to come up there and and it was really good you know it was really good I enjoyed it uh, some of it might be a blur <laughs> but but it was fun you know and that's and I've and that's what I've always I mean I've always had fun in this business you know it, it ain't never been like a job uh, and, and I've, I've been around some. You know, and I really, I ain't, I mean, there's a couple of packer heads, but you don't have to deal with them. But, <laughs> but as a whole, I'd say they might have been two rotten apples in the barrel, you know, but, but as a whole, I mean, I never had no problems with nobody. I, I, you know, everybody was always, you know, very nice to me. And, uh, and especially the older guys, I listened because I listened and 
they critique and tell me what I need to do better. And, and so, and hands on learning is the best in the world. And I got to learn from the best. So, you know, uh, I, well, I enjoyed it. So, needless to say, if you went back in time, you would not change anything. Nah, I really don't think I would. I, I mean, you know, maybe went to Japan a little bit more, or just, but not nothing major. I wouldn't. I might, uh, Careful, Stan Hansen was over in Japan, and he still couldn't see who he was hitting. Be, <laughs> yeah. be very careful with that one. All right, well, we're in, the, we're in the ninth inning, so we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, ninth Tommy inning. Rich. Ninth inning, call in Mariano. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence, Collision Specialist, 631-261-6420. That's 631 631- Two six one six four two zero Auto Excellence. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by Because Wine is your second favorite four letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. You want to star in your own success? Call QuickCast, www.quickcast.com, 866-7-CAST-NOW. That's 866-7-CAST-NOW, QuickCast. Star in your own success. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Pharaoh. Seen every Thursday, produced out of Indie Music TV, but this is a Friday, and we are honored to have former NWA champion Tommy Rich. And notice to his right is super promoter Eric Sims. But before we get to Eric Sims, Tommy. Yes. You're in an industry um, that's kind of a different type of world. You're, you, so many wrestlers that you've known have passed. How yeah. do you? How do you? And that you've been probably very close with. How do you? How do you handle this? I mean, it's got to be heart wrenching on, on a, almost regular basis. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's. I figured I'd be one of the first ones to go. You know, and I've seen you know so many, especially in my my age group that uh. You know, and it's uh, it's it sad what it is, and I mean you just you just got to get up, and put your shoes on, and, and go about another day, man. Because bottom line is in this world, especially today, ain't nobody promised tomorrow. And I just try to live the best I can and do the things I need to do, and hopefully wake up in the morning. Mm. How's your physical condition? You know, currently after all those years of bumping, bumps and punches and kicks, how do you feel nowadays physically? Well, I mean, some mornings you get up and, you know, the body's hurting. But, uh, I, like I said, I've been, I've been able to do it for, you know, I was in a six-man tag in Jackson, Tennessee this past weekend. Wow. wow. Cage match. Wow. Uh, a cage, cage match? It feels cage, fine. Jerry the King, Roman, <laughs> Rock and Roll Express against what? Dangerous Doug Gilbert, Matt again. Rivera, and myself. Uh, it was an outdoor show. It was Jerry Lawler's 50 years oh, so you of wrestling. The, you went the 50th oh, uh, anniversary. Yeah, 50 wow. years of wrestling. We did a cage match. They had a little over uh, 21, 2,200 people there. Nice. And they did a, a – and and I'm telling you, I mean, and 25 is all they could have. You know, 2,500 is all they could have. So, they, I mean, you know, it just 40 years later and the wrestling fans out there still know who we are, man. God bless. And thank you all for being there because without them, they ain't no us to begin with, you know. Amen. One last question for you before you go, and thank you for coming down. This has been f freaking fantastic. Gordon Soley, greatest announcer of all time. What says Wild? Greatest Wild? announcer of all time. I love Gordon Soley. I mean, you talk about Bill Lanter, you know, he can make you or break you in a Matt Wrestling magazine. <laughs> On that mic, Gordon Soley, he can make you or break you. 
and and all the years I was there, you know, he always never had nothing but good things to t say about me. I'd take him like if I had time. Like a lot of times we had to do a Columbus TV, and it was live, so you'd have to leave in your tights and haul Bud. You'd have time to hit Mickey D's or something, grab a burger, and haul Bud to make that live TV. But if I wasn't on, if I happened to not be on TV, I'd always take Gordon. Uh, to the you know to the airport after the show you know yeah I love Gordon Soley to death. All right, to your right is the North East's greatest pro wrestling promoter and friend of the show, Mr. Eric Sims. Eric, how are you, buddy? Good. How are you? All right. What's going on? All right. Uh, well, uh, before we get into the plugs, and um, just want to do a quick shout out to um, Tracy Smothers, who was supposed to be touring with us this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, he uh, became ill and uh, had to be hospitalized. So uh, we just send our uh, thoughts and prayers out to Tracy, and hopefully he uh, hopefully he gets better, and uh, we can uh, bring him on on tour in the future if he's uh, if he's well enough. So uh, you know, just uh, just everybody just say a little prayer for Tracy, and hopefully uh, you know, hopefully he kicks out of uh, what's going on with him. So anyway. Uh, on to the tour for this weekend. Tomorrow morning, uh, 9.30 a.m., uh, uh, Wildfire is going to be doing a virtual uh, on the K&S webpage, uh, K&S WrestleFest webpage. We're going to be doing a uh, virtual 9.30 in the morning, so join us on the uh, Facebook Live on the KNS WrestleFest page, uh, 9.30 to 11.30. As Freddie Miller would say it, don't miss it, be there! Exactly, <laughs> Bubba. Oh, oh, Daddy. Oh, you know, baby. You know. Anyway. Sims, you look a little you look a little out of it today, all right? Any, What's going any, on? Any, anyway. Uh, Come on, Sims. One, Live one, up, one, up. 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock. We're going to be at the Wrestling Universe, yeah, my home away go. from home, yes, and yes, FBI yes, reunion, yes. Oh, well, uh, two-thirds of the FBI reunion with uh, Wildfire, the Don, Tommy Rich, and little Guido, Guido. Uh, from ECW. And nice. then... And then at uh, 6 o'clock at night, we're going to be down in Ocean Gate, New Jersey. Um, nice. Val's Pals Go to War. It's a special charity wrestling show for our friend, uh, our, 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 our uh, pal Val, who's a 17-year-old uh, young man who has a cerebral palsy. And uh, all the local wrestling promotions are getting together and putting on a big show. And uh, we got the FBI as a s special guest down there, uh, along with a couple other surprises. And... Uh, you know, please uh, join it. It's a good cho uh, good uh, cause, and uh, we're going to be down in Ocean Gate at the EMS Field, 107 East Cape May Avenue uh, in uh, Ocean Gate, New Jersey. So uh, come on down there. We're going to be signing autographs, and uh, who knows what could happen, uh, you know, in the ring. You never know. You may see wildfire uh, you in, never know. in the ring. You, nev you never know. We well, I was thinking. I was thinking. But what do you think, wildfire? You think you could get Sims the tag team with you, and what? you guys could be a tag team? What? Uh, honorary FBI member? I think that'd be a great <laughs> idea. You know, I was talking to Eric one he morning. He looks Italian. And, okay. Why you know, not? Female breast point. inspector, FBI, what? What's you, about you, as Italian as Tommy? You could be. Uh, this uh, could be a great yeah. tag team. He likes pizza. I know that. Pizza. pizza. That's <laughs> what I love. Pizza. Oh, yeah, no, I love pizza. Get hit with a foreign calzone object. Right. Anyway, catch uh, Tommy Wildfire on K and S <laughs> in the morning <laughs> for a virtual, and then catch him at Wrestling Universe as the reunion of the FBI <laughs> is involved. We want to thank you, Tommy, for coming in. Thank you. You're thank y'all for having me, man. Wait a second, I got to plug. I got to plug ESSpromotions.com, and as always, it's no BS because you heard it from your cult hero, ESS. Oh, All right, you've been watching he's Monty Nefaro, Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. You can catch Monty. Monty DeFaro on the Monty DeFaro Facebook Live, Monty DeFaro YouTube page, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, Channel 115, every Tuesday from 8.30 to 9 p.m. By the way, there will be a schedule change. We are now going to 7 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, okay. Early rises on Saturday, 6.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Channel 115. And on Channel 20, hmm. you also can catch us at 1.30 in the morning. You Faro will time. catch Wildfire, Tommy Rich, and Icon on our special cable shows. Once again, this has been Mike Monty. This has been The Pharaoh. Stay tuned for The Rocker, Marty Gennetti. See you oh soon. Oh, boy. <laughs> Not good. Later.